Thank you so much for joining us today on our session. So welcome again. Uh, my name is Juliana Pazzini. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions on the International Side. It's a great, great pleasure to have all of you here today. And I hope you enjoy our session. Today, we are going to talk about Toronto Film School programs leading to Bachelors of Creative Arts and all possibilities and different things that you can do in the industry upon your graduation and while you are studying with us. Uh, without any further ado, let me introduce our panelists today. So I have here a great team of people, and I will start with Adam Till. Um, Adam Till is a Toronto-raised screenwriter, producer, former lawyer, best known as the co-creator of the Gemini Award-winning sitcom called Billable Hours. With a wealth of experience in the film, television, and entertainment industry, Adam has recently been appointed Vice President of Toronto Film School. In this role, he leverages his extensive background and expertise to guide both faculty and students, driving the institution's mission to nurture the next generation of creative talent. So welcome, Adam. Thank you. Look forward to chatting a bit more later on and uh, uh, talking all about Toronto Film School and the Bachelor of Creative Arts as well. Thank you. And then we also have Chi King, our international admissions advisor and team lead on the international side. Welcome, Chi. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for joining the webinar today. Hope that you're going to have a lot of useful information. Thank you, Chi. And also, Ankita Laroya, our international admissions advisor. Thank you, Ankita. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're joining. Great. So if in case you have any questions um, that you would like to ask us at the end of the webinar, there is a Q&A button. You can just press that, put your questions there, and we are going to be getting those at the end. Um, the raise hand feature is not available. So if you have any questions, please write your questions into the Q&A session. Okay. So let me share my screen. And what I would like us to first um, do here, oops. So first to do here is for us to see a little bit of who we are as Toronto Film School. Oh, I think I have to share with the audio. Just give me one second. So I want you to hear from our academics, from everyone who is teaching at Toronto Film School. So let's hear what they have to say. The act of creation is, is scary because we are kind of laying ourselves raw in a way. This industry is difficult, and that's because every creative pursuit is worth it. It takes passion, perseverance, and wine. It's very exciting. It's a lot of work. You have to give emotionally. You have to have nerves of steel. You have to love what you do. It's hard, right, because you put yourself into it. It's not for the faint of heart. We're opening ourselves up to other people having opinions and ideas on what goes through our head and, and what goes through our heart. As an artist, you either feel like you're the greatest thing that ever happened or a complete fraud. It takes a lot of discipline, it takes a lot of courage. You, you do it because you love it, you do it because you want to express, you do it because you want to say something. Because it gets ugly, it gets long, it gets tiresome, it gets exhausting. It's one of those things that not everybody can do. Anything and all things that could go wrong, will go wrong. And yet you're going to do it anyways. But that's, but that's the game, right? The show must go on. <laughs> you think making films is hard? Try making video games. Make no mistake, this is a challenging program. It's something you eat, breathe, and sleep every single day. There's so much going on. There's so much collaboration. There's so many people working together. People that really are passionate about the craft and they love what they do. And that passion, you just feel it in the hallways. And that's kind of a magical thing. <clears throat> that's what this school is. This is people with ideas getting together and doing amazing things. So I hope you guys have enjoyed um, and uh, welcome, welcome to Toronto Film School. So let me just now get it into my presentation and let's talk about it. Just give me one second. Okay. 
<laughs> All right, so welcome to Toronto Film School and York University. So Toronto Film School is much, much more than a film school, as you just saw and heard from all the directors that work here with us. So you will see that we will have Toronto Film School at York University, and the two schools, they work together. They are sister schools. That means creators coming into our diploma programs at Toronto Film School will have a chance to level up into leadership positions, leadership um, knowledge and skills and complete a bachelor's degree in creative arts. So all of you who are here today and you are into these creative careers, you want to become a producer, a director, a um, gamer, you want to become a graphic designer, you want to become an actor, you are on the right place. So here is what we have at Toronto Film School. And for those of you who have never been to Canada, those of you who are here have already seen this, but especially in Toronto, we are the entertainment industry and this entertainment industry is booming a lot. Think about Netflix. For all of you who really like to watch Netflix sitcoms or films, every single week we have something new on Netflix. And that's the demand that we have in the industry. People who are creating those sitcoms, those documentaries, films, they are working right now. And there is this huge demand. The same with film, um, with video games. The students that are interested in that specific field, they see that nowadays people are playing much, much more than before. And everything that you do, you need a designer. So here you have an idea of how the film, television industry, the graphic design industry, and the video game industry is right now. It's billions and billions of dollars that is just coming more and more. If you want to be part of that, if you want to take the next step, so then York University and Toronto Film School is your place. And let's see why is that. So at Toronto Film School, as I said before, we are much more than a film school. We have people who are working with us as our president, Andrew Barsley, who is not just someone that is at school. He's a person, he's a leader who is a award-winning executive producer. He has received many awards in the industry. He is the creator, the producer of Schitt's Creek, which is on Netflix, and I'm sure most of you have seen it already. Imagine having classes and be mentored by people who are working with Andrew Parsley. So that's what you find here at Toronto Film School. And why is that relevant to you? Here is why our students make their mark in the industry after coming to study with us in our programs. So if you see all these films here, I'm sure you will recognize them, even games like from Ubisoft. So we have students, current students, graduate students, faculty who are working on those films, who did projects together. And this is what you are going to find here. It's much more than a school. It is a community of creators that it is empowered every single day by those people who are in the industry right now and understand what takes all the next steps to become successful. It's not from a day to night. It is a process. But this process, you will start from day one when you join our programs. So what do we have at Toronto Film School? We have creative diplomas. So we have diplomas in acting for film, film production, um, graphic design, video game design and animation, video game design development, and writing for film. So all different types of creators, everything that you want to understand, how do you do the next step? You have that idea in your mind. How do you bring that to life? These are the programs that will help you to develop all those skills by doing the projects. You are not going to be watching lectures, but you are going to be producing those. And if you want to continue your career and getting into leadership positions in the industry, then we have the creative arts degree program that is students coming from Toronto Film School will fulfill the prerequisite of the bachelors of creative arts. And then it will allow you to join a degree program, complete the degree as few as two years, and also be eligible for post-graduation work permit. So we are going to talk more about that. And I will bring now 
to talk to us a little bit that into the programs that we have at Turner Film School and York University, our Vice President, Adam Thiel. Adam, over to you. Thank you, Juliana. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming to this. And I know it's different times of day, depending on where you are. So uh, appreciate the commitment and, and tuning in. So uh, I'll briefly start with my own story, because I think it uh, informs a lot of people's decisions on, on what they want to do in, in terms of is there a career in the art? Are there careers in the arts? Um, I'm a lawyer originally. Um, I actually have a bachelor's degree in economics, a law degree and an MBA with a finance concentration. And I was working at a downtown law firm in Toronto and I wasn't happy. I was miserable. I was always thinking about the other things I could do in the world that were much more enjoyable. Specifically, I always had a love for film. And finally, I decided, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I only think I get one go at this. So I'm going to... Um, leave my law firm and I'm going to going to try to make it in the film world. And I was lucky yeah. enough to get some traction and do some short films that were successful. Uh, as Juliana said, I had a series about lawyers, about my experience as a lawyer called Billable Hours that won a Gemini Award. Uh, it was on for three seasons in Toronto on a major network. Uh, I won a Canadian Comedy Award during that time. Since then, I've had the opportunity to work on uh, various TV and movies. Uh, I did a movie that starred Oscar winner Mira Sorvino and Oscar nominee yeah. Abigail Breslin as well as uh, um, Rob Lowe from uh, from the West Wing. Uh, so I've had uh, some success. And uh, what I realized in my journey was there are careers. This is something that no one told me was a real possibility, but there are billions of dollars, as Juliana said, being spent in all areas of the arts, in film and video game and graphic design. Uh, that means that there's jobs there. So what attracted me to Toronto Film School was this was the school that was not just talking about theory, but was actually teaching students how to get into this in these industries, how to how things work, how standard practices are. All of the faculty are industry active. Uh, so everyone who's going to be teaching you at Toronto Film School works in the area that they teach, uh, including, of course, our president, Andrew Barnsley, who uh, who's won nine Emmy Awards for Schitt's Creek and myself. I continue to work as well. Um, this is going to be basically starting your career as soon as you start school. Um, for those of you who go into film production, you'll be shooting a scene the first week. You'll be holding a camera the first week. Acting, you'll be doing scene work first week. Writing, you'll be writing, you'll be working on longer form projects, but you'll be starting on character work week one. Graphic design, you'll be designing week one. Video game, you'll be working on the coding or the animation of video games week one. We're going to get you going right away. And that was sort of the appeal to me. I, you know, I respect theory schools. If you want to learn the theory of film and the history and how to be a critic, that's that's great, but that's not why you come to Toronto Film School. Uh, we're unique in that we are all about the applied, hands-on, this is what we do in the industry, here are the jobs, here's how you get them. Um, Andrew, uh, I was lucky enough to work with our president, Andrew Barnsley. We we sold the show that, he sold the show that I wrote to a major network uh, called Fox in the United States. Uh, that's how I met him. Uh, but he is super generous with his time and, and you know, with students, uh, we have a student, Gospel, uh, Mariana, Mariana Yagam, which I always pronounce incorrectly, but if Gospel, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Uh, he's a Tamil student, but we have students from all across India. Uh, he made friends with Andrew, and, and Andrew ended up bringing him on a uh, on a film shoot to Newfoundland, to Eastern Canada, uh, for his new, shoot, his new show that's called Son of a Critch. Uh, Gospel ended up uh, meeting a lot of people, working on that show for a little while. He, he arranged screenings when he came back to Toronto. Uh, he's now got a, a job at Muse Entertainment in Toronto. Um, everybody's accessible. We become your network. So whether it's Andrew, myself, your program directors, your faculty, you're going to come in, you're going to learn hands-on from people who are doing it, how it's done. And then you're going to have a connection to industry and you're going to see industry projects. Um, Michelangelo Mazanke, our, uh, uh, our director of production. So he helps organize the thesis films. He's hired about, I think, six or eight students in the last couple of years to his own production companies. Um, we'll, we'll hire you, but we'll introduce you. We are, you know, the industry. We are part of the industry, but we are a big part of the industry. Uh, and this goes across programs. Um, we mentioned Andrew, Stephen Hoffner, who runs uh, uh, film production, uh, produces sports documentaries. He's actually got one coming out this fall. Uh, Hart Massey, who runs acting, is a... Uh, uh, continues to work as an actor and is, a, is an excellent, excellent theater actor. You should see him in one of his plays, but you will be doing plays as an acting student. Every acting student participates in a play at the end of the program. 
Uh, Michelle Daly, who runs writing, used to be one of the top executives in the country. Uh, she worked at CBC and uh, CTV Comedy. She actually brought in Schitt's Creek, Andrew's show. That's how we know her. Uh, Rob uh, and JP, who run the video game programs. Rob has worked on uh, Red Dead Redemption and uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto, among other video games. Uh, these are major players. And then Phoenix Paul, who, who runs graphic design, uh, she's highly industry active to the point where she's able to get industry to come in for final projects and work with students so that everybody actually has the experience of working with a real industry client at the end of the program. So you're going to have a who's who of the arts players in Canada. They're going to help you learn how things get set up uh, or, or how careers get set up, how you get organized and, and out there working. Um, and they're going to get you started. When we say that your career starts when you come to Toronto Film School, it really does. Think about your, your teachers and your colleagues as your network. Uh, and you're, you're sort of off to the races right away. So that's the first thing I learned uh, through my, my journey. The second thing I learned was my business skills from my MBA and my economics degree and my law skills, they actually helped me quite a lot um, as I became a producer. So I started off just writing and then I ended up producing as well. And uh, what I realized is the creative industries are like other industries. You need general leadership, entrepreneurship, managerial skills. So you know, it's 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 great to learn your trade, and we're going to teach you that at Toronto Film School. But for those of you who are thinking, maybe I want to work at a production company and uh, work in the development department and, and help bring in projects. There's some contract work there. Maybe I want to be a production manager. There's some scheduling there. There's some budgeting there. So there's some managerial positions in the arts that that actually benefit from a little bit of business, entrepreneurship, leadership, knowledge. Enter the Bachelor of Creative Arts. So it's a, a level up for those of you who are interested in potentially going to the management side of the arts. Um, it does make you PGWP eligible. Um, it's another two years. So two years at Toronto Film School, not even, it's 18 months, but we, you, you know, you're welcome to take a break if you want to. Another two years at Bachelor of Creative Arts. Uh, you get that bachelor credential and you get uh, a, a host of skills that can help you differentiate yourself if you are looking for that sort of management leadership path. Uh, some of you might go to a company, you're a video game designer or animator, and there's a opportunity for someone to lead that department. Well, the Bachelor of Creative Arts will certainly give you a leg up there. Some of you might just think, I want to be a creative entrepreneur. I want to start my own film company and make my own films. Well, we'll talk about how to access grants in Canada and around the world, how to access financing, how to put together a business plan. Um, a lot of the the key leadership aspects of the arts are, are they're, they're a little bit different from other areas, but they're still important. And for those of you who are thinking of a career beyond maybe the trade that you learned in at Toronto Film School, uh, it's a great option. So, you know, I've been involved with both. I started off running the writing program when I first arrived at TFS, then moved to the Bachelor of Creative Arts. And now I'm back at Toronto Film School for the this vice president role. Um, I'm very proud of all of what we offer. Uh, Bachelor of Creative Arts, similar to TFS, everybody's industry active. You have people working in uh, film, sculpting. Um, there's a general media consultant who helps you with your graduating project, which is your sort of thesis where you can come out with a business plan of your own for a creative project. Um, we put together everything we think you need for a creative career. Um, and we're extremely proud of what we do. Juliana, was that too long an introduction? <laughs> that was perfect. Thank you so much, Adam. I think it clarifies a lot for students who are in this industry, who are interested to take the next step and they are not sure. So Toronto Film School will bring that creative side for them to shape it off, to Put all those ideas in practice, have the portfolio. So every single program, as Adam was mentioning, you will have a portfolio that you can showcase later on. Even between terms, you can showcase your portfolio and you have all the copyrights of that. So if you have an idea and you want to move forward with that idea, you will have all the rights on that. Journal Film School has no rights over your idea. So that's something very special that we want our students to be empowered with the ideas and with the projects that they develop at Toronto Film School. And Adam, talking about this, we hear a lot um, in terms of industry and uh, trends, trends that are changing right now. Mm -hmm. We were talking to Michelangelo last week, the uh, director of the producer, uh, the, the production part at Toronto Film School, and he was mentioning that we are always ahead of everything that comes into the industry to help the students to also be prepared for what's coming forward. 
will be there anything that you could also shed some light on how the curriculum is designed at Toronto Film School? So how can we really empower those students into the entertainment trends that happens in the industry? Yeah. Well, we're agile and we have to be agile because we're the we're the actual career school. We're the school that you go to if you want to get a job. So again, if you want a theory program, you know, from a from a public institution in Canada, that's great. That's not us. We're actually trying to keep you you know, on trend, ready for whatever's out there as soon as you get out there so you can get a job. So, you know, among other things, we just got a whole new host of camera equipment. Um, so we bought a bunch of equipment from uh, Sony and we have a relationship with Sony. Uh, we've also got some top Airy cameras. For those of you who know cameras, we do have a an Airy, uh, a Mira and an Alexa Mini that you can access. You have to build, of course, your skills through the program to get the better cameras. Um, we have a, uh, for, for thesis films, for the, the fil film you do at the end of the program, uh, we actually have con uh, concierge service with Canada Film Equipment. So they come to your location, they deliver the equipment, they're there for you while you shoot as tech support, and then they help you tear down uh, and bring everything back afterwards. So we're we're really staying on trend in terms of uh, not just the equipment, we're making sure you always have the top of the line equipment in the film school, uh, but also just how we treat you and making sure you can use it and enjoy it properly. Uh, on the video game side, and, and graphic design side, we have all the updated software that you would need uh, as well. Uh, editing software, we've got all of the top, uh, all of the top stuff that you might need. People ask a lot about AI. Um, how is AI impacting things in the creative industries? So we've of course been right on top of this. And let let me just reassure everybody, this will not in any way hinder jobs. Quite the opposite. I think there's going to be more jobs. We're just in that period where everybody's scared and trying to figure out what they are. But similarly to you know when when people move when there was the move from film to video in uh, in, in the film world and, and it stopped being sort of physically hard film that people cut and that started to be all done digitally, uh, everybody said, well, there's all these jobs that are going there. There were jobs that went away and then new jobs came to into existence and far more of them. Um, so we're learning about AI right now. Um, <clears throat> in the editing world, for example, it can put together a rough assembly. Um, so it can do that first edit. It can choose shots for you if you if you prompt it, but you have to learn to prompt it. So we're revising our curriculum right now to teach you what they're doing in the industry, which is teaching uh, prompting an AI to do that first cut for you. And right now it's actually quite a lot of work and again, might end up in even more jobs. Um, you still need to, to learn the, the core nonlinear editing, of course. So we're teaching you that, but we want to make sure whatever's happening in the industry, um, you're going to learn about that and then how to do it. Uh, so you don't go out to a job and then they, 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 you say, oh, I didn't know about AI. I don't know how to prompt it. No, we're going to teach you how to do it at our school. Uh, video game is having a similar experience. Uh, the coders are now able to, without the animators, have the AI create some simple animations and to, to sort of test their code. Um, it's not replacing animators by any stretch. And, and to the extent it starts getting better, you'll still need animators to train it and then to prompt it and then to run it. Um, it's Again, it's just going to be a change in the jobs that are out there. But we're on top of that. We're consulting with the top consultants in the in the entertainment industry regularly, uh, and we're agile. We can make changes quickly. We're not, you know, a public institution that it takes two years to change one line of the curriculum. We're changing constantly. That's amazing. That's very important for students because as they come from different countries, they really want to experience the best into the program, and by being able to pivot right away as soon as the industry is having that demand, it's something that is very important for them to consider. So in, in these lines, Adam, we have some questions that students usually come to us and they are very interested to know where are our students making their mark in the industry? One of my slides I had uh, mentioned that, that the students coming to study with us they do pieces in the industry. So we had students, um, I always have this one in my mind. So Maria Gabriela, she came for the video game animation. And because of the networking and all the connections that faculty has, she was able to do an interview with Disney. And currently she works in the animation uh, department at Disney. So would you happen to have maybe a few examples that you could share with our students of successful stories of students who did some part in the industry or anything that students shared with you that you can let us know as well? Well, yeah, that, this would take a very long time to go through through all of them. But if you look at all the projects around me, these are all projects our students have worked on. Anything that comes to Toronto for film, um, our students generally work on. We have a ton of students in the video game side at Ubisoft, Gameloft, among others. 
Um, certainly Rob uh, and JP helped connect them there. But all the faculty, half of our faculty are working and, and they bring students in, they get internships. Um, you know, specifically, you know, BCA, we, we have, of course, Reith, Reith Mazumder. So she uh, did the writing program at Toronto Film School and then, then the BCA, hugely successful. She directed a feature film. Uh, she's now got a job through one of her instructors, of course, uh, at Efron Films, which does a show called The First 48, which is a fairly popular true crime show about the first 48 hours after a crime. Um, and she's been working on that as a producer. And I think she'll probably end up directing and, and writing there as well. That's a uh, that's an Emmy winning or Emmy nominated. And I think it's won a couple show that she's just gone to right after school. Um, you know, sticking with Disney, we have Vanessa Carpino from film from writing also uh, at Disney, but as a in, in marketing and distribution, she was a great writer, but she she found that job at Disney right away. And now she's very high level. She just won an award, uh, uh, a women in film and television award and uh, like a prestigious internship because of it. Uh, so I'll, I'll point out that not all of our students, some a lot of them go straight to their area of the arts and, and do really well. Uh, Kishale Ray is another example of someone who became a big editor. Prasanna Paul um, has been a, a major VFX player in Canada since he graduated about 10 years ago. But some people choose that business route because truth is the, the knowledge you, you get from Toronto Film School uh, and if you do the BCA on top of that, this is going to make you eligible for jobs in the film world that you maybe hadn't thought of. Um, Andrew is Barnsley at Project 10, the Schitt's Creek producing production company. Uh, his uh, One of his main execs, Shelby Bronstein, did our film production program. And she was terrific. I remember her as a student. She made a, a, an excellent film. But she, I think she realized she wanted to be on the other side, deciding whose projects to bring in, deciding which projects should move forward. And of course, she's done pretty well because she helped bring in Schitt's Creek, which won nine Emmy Awards. So... You know, our students are everywhere doing everything. This is an education that sets you up for a, a host of things. Hands-on, certainly you'll be, you'll be, you know, right at the top of everybody's list to work on every film production, video game design that there's a, an option for. But um, beyond that, there are business jobs. The BCA certainly helps with those management leadership jobs. Uh, we just had a BCA student get a, a full-time job as a graphic designer for the Toronto Blue Jays, our baseball team in Toronto. Uh, this is a full-time position. Those of you worried about AI produce, uh, having an impact on graphic design, no, it's the opposite. Um, I think what everybody's realizing now is, yes, AI can do a design for you, and it's always going to be fairly terrible. And I think people are realizing how important and skilled graphic designers have to be understanding a product, a vision, a brand, the psychology behind what they're doing, the color palette. There's so much to graphic design. So um, you know, across the board, uh, our students are just everywhere. That's really great to hear, Adam. And uh, sometimes it's hard for our students to picture that. But when we talk to them, when we explain, when we hear from you, we can see that Toronto Film School really puts the students in a different position because all this is possible due to the network that we also have. It is a, a creative community where we bring everybody together. And it's a way to empower each one of them. And one of the questions that sometimes students have, and it is something different from different countries, um, also depends on the culture, it is the networking. So some students, they don't see the value of networking. How can that really help them to be successful in the industry? Mm -hmm. My simple example, I'm not from the industry, but from the experiences that I hear from all uh, faculty is, for example, you cannot do a video game by yourself. You cannot become a video game a producer, and then you do a game with one person. You need more people in your team to create, to design, to put everything together. The same with film. You cannot just be a director and direct the film by yourself. You need the actors, the producers. So I want to hear from your perspective. How is the networking really important in this entertainment industry? And how can the students take that advantage by having all this faculty teaching them? Yes. Well, okay. So I'll just repeat, as you, as, as you said, we're we are industry. So whatever area you're going into, your teachers will be your first network, your program directors, your leadership, you know, myself and Andrew are there for anyone who needs us. Um, and your colleagues, there's someone from every class who's going to break quickly and get a job, and usually a high level level job early in their career. And they often take friends with them. So keep that in mind, you know, as you meet your colleagues. Yes, everyone's starting from scratch. It happens and it happens a lot and it happens quickly. 
Um, I think the misnomer about networking that scares a lot of students is you have to go to every party and every event and shake everyone's hand and ingratiate yourself and make a big deal of, of talking to people. That's not what we mean by networking. Um, we're going to send you a ton of opportunities, whatever program you're in at school. If you're in film production, we have a relationship with TIFF, so the Toronto International Film Festival. There's events that we can get you tickets to. There's screenings. They have a permanent uh, location in Toronto that operates year-round and has screenings and, uh, and events and, and workshops. You'll be invited to those. Video games, same thing. There's video game conferences. There's MIGS. There's, there's Fan Expo. Uh, graphic design. These, there's all sorts of events. You don't have to go to these events and shake everybody's hand and give them your business card and say, you should hire me. Uh, what you do have to do is continue to go to these events because once you go to them for a few months, six months, a year, you realize I'm seeing all the same people. I only talked to one person at the last one, but they, they came to this next one and now I have someone I know and they just introduced me to one more person. And now I have two business cards and the one person, the first person I met just got a promotion. They are now, instead of a uh, of a manager, they're a senior manager, and they might be able to hire me soon. If you're meeting and talking to one person or two people at these events, you're just showing up, showing your face, being part of it. That's enough. That's how it happens. The person who goes around, goes to one event a year, but gives everybody their card and shakes everybody's hand, no one remembers that person. The people who go and make this part of their lives, uh, that's who end up becoming part of the community, getting jobs uh, you know, getting into the, the places and the spaces where they want to. You'd be surprised how much showing up matters. So we're going to provide you with the opportunities. We're going to, to send you things. Um, and as a student, you always have the choice, you know, and I know you'll be tired sometimes and some of you will have part-time jobs. Goss Bell, who I mentioned, always forced himself to go to every event. Reith, who I mentioned, always forced himself to go to every event, uh, herself to go to every event. Um, not Not every event, but enough of them that she started to meet people and he started to meet people. Uh, Gospel especially does not consider himself a social butterfly. He doesn't love doing it, but he knows it's important. And he meets one or two people at every event and shakes you know, their hand and talks to them, actually tries to connect with them. Uh, if you can do that, that's what we mean by networking. Yes, you're going to have a, a solid network base at the school, but going out beyond that, uh, is, it's still important. We're going to help you. Uh, we're right now giving uh, tickets to students for three film festival events that we're sponsoring. Um, I'll be at these events. I'll, I'll introduce students around. We're going to facilitate it. But you have to show up and take advantage of what we provide for you. That's really great. Thank you so much for sharing that, Adam. And my last piece would be, what advice would you give to someone who is passionate about entering into the entertainment industry um, and are not sure of what to do as the first step? As a passionate person, producer, or with all your experiences that you have, what would you say for that specific student? Well, uh, first of all, if you have a passion and you actually love an area of the arts, I think you, I think you're lucky. I, I, at first, I thought it was terrible because I was thinking I'm a lawyer and all these other lawyers just seem like they're OK doing whatever it is we're doing and just grinding out their lives. And I have this thing I really want to do. It's ruining it for me because I can't just sit here and, and be a lawyer. But it was actually the best thing I ever did was to just say, you know what, I'm going to move towards my passion. Um, I actually have something I love. You know, I love to write. Uh, I love to express myself. I love to tell a story. I love to, to, to talk about some truth in the world that I've experienced and, and try to create a, a story that thematically represents that truth. Um, it's not a bad thing. You know, accept it as a wonderful thing in your life. And, you know, if you move towards it, in my experience, all the people who have, with passion, who have moved aggressively towards their goal, it's going to be a huge improvement. And, you know, again, there's a, there's, a, there's a saying, if you shoot for the moon, you land among the stars. Even if you don't get exactly what you thought you were going to get, it's going to be great. It's going to be a lot closer to what, you know, you want to do. Um, I was lucky. I always wanted a TV show. I got a TV show early in my career. And then, you know, all of these other opportunities opened up and suddenly I'm doing true crime movies, even though I'd done a comedy series that that was wonderful and I really enjoyed. And I'm working at a film school that I'd never thought about, but I'm having the, the best time with students who are also passionate and loving it. So, you know, everybody's story is different. Um, Andrew, our president, started off doing sports documentaries and ended up making a comedy. Um, you know, you don't know exactly where you're going to land, but you know, you know, I think, you know, if you pursue your passion and you go towards it aggressively, 
um, it's going to be a great improvement in your life. So that's why I'm so passionate about our school. We actually are trying to get you there. We're not sort of teaching you a theoretical ed education with criticism courses and history. We have some history and there's a, 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 a necessary amount of theory in all of our classes, but we're trying to teach you, this is how you tell a story. This is how you design a character for a video game. You know, this is how you um, pull focus when you're, when you're shooting a scene. Like we're trying to teach you the practical tools that will help you realize your art. Um, so, you know, that's, that's why I think our school is, is the perfect first step. I wouldn't be involved. Those of you who, you know, wonder about genuine, I think you're going to find a lot of genuine people at this school who wouldn't be involved with the school. If they didn't think it was doing the right thing for students. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, I think you summarized everything. <laughs> so let, let's open for questions. And Kita, do we have any questions from the audience that um, we could have them answered now where everything is clear. Um, thank you so much, Juliana and Adam. So I think it was lovely to, because every session that I attend with Adam or anybody else from the faculty, we every time I learn more. So thank you so much. It, it was quite informative. Um, I did answer a lot of questions, but there were a few questions that popped up. And I think that it's better that either Juliana or Adam, if you can answer, that would be great. So that one question that popped up, I'll just do one second. The weather in Toronto is not the best recently, so we apologize, guys. But everybody is having some allergy issues recently. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, forty degrees with the humidity. Yeah, for those of us with allergies, it's a rough day. But yeah. usually Toronto is beautiful. <laughs> I uh, agree. I agree. But it's just the worst season right now. I think with the weather changing so much. Yeah. So I apologize, everyone. So uh, one question that popped up the most was Juliana regarding the admissions requirement. So if we can talk a little bit about what the admission requirement looks like, uh, that would be great. Absolutely. So what I will do, I will quickly share my screen one more time. And then for those students who would like also to take a screenshot, um, you can do that or we can connect with you on a one-on-one -on -one session. So here is the main admission requirements for the programs at Toronto Film School. So there is an application form in an application fee of $150. So you can complete the application form online or you can connect with us and we can guide you through that. So we will need your high school transcripts. So students must have to graduate from high school. In case you have done any post-secondary education, we can also look into that. So there is an English proficiency test that is necessary. We accept IELTS, TOEFL, PTE, so um, Duolingual. There are many different options for you to have the English um, proficiency test uh, waived. And then a copy of the passport. So we really need you to have your passport. Then each program has a program requirements. So let's say if you are coming for film production, there will be a portfolio. We will also share with you the samples and we will guide you on what you need to do for that specific portfolio. If you are coming for acting, there will also be an audition that you have to do in a writing piece, uh, just explaining why you want to come for that specific program. For video game, graphic design, there is a letter of intent. So we will share with you the specific details for each program uh, once you connect with us, and then we can guide you through that. If you are in Canada right now on a valid study permit or you are a protected refugee, so we can also look into that for you to come to study with us. And then after you are admitted, we collect all your documents. There is going to be a minimum tuition deposit of 7,000 Canadian dollars. And then the students will be receiving their letter of acceptance along with the provincial attestation letter. So all the students coming to study at Toronto Film School right now, they will be doing Toronto Film School at Yorkville. So you will have a dual enrollment with Toronto Film School program and the Bachelors of Creative uh, Arts program. So then we can also talk into details in a one-on-one -on -one session to explain you what are the steps and what this means for you to get um, everything set up for you to come to study with us. My email is there. If you have any question, you can just send me a message and then my team will connect with you shortly. I just quickly want to add here, Juliana, everyone who was asking me, um, how can I get connected to my admissions advisor? please email Juliana and we will get you connected to your respective admissions advisor. And then we can take it on from there regarding your specific situation as well. I will also put my email in the chat. So in case anyone needs to connect with me, 
If you are not sure who is your admission advisor is, just send me a message and then we'll get you connected with them. That would be great. Thank you so much, Juliana. All right. So, oh. sorry, uh, Adam. Yeah, question about the writing program. Can I answer that one? Oh, yes, I was about to ask that question only, Adam. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Ask it because I, I I didn't read <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So yeah, so um, the question is mainly about like how the creative industry, specific to writing, how we will help them and prepare the students for the industry once they complete the program. Yes. So like all our programs, uh, it's a full comprehensive package that we usually put together so you can sell yourself. So the difference between our writing program and a lot of others is a lot of, a lot of, I mean, some of them are, again, pure theory, but the ones that actually have you doing screenwriting often say, okay, you'll write one project. You'll write a, uh, a half hour television pilot, and that's your entirety, the entirety of your program. Uh, in our program, you are going to work in three streams simultaneously. So you're going to write a feature film, a movie over four terms over a year with one of the, the top people in the country. It might be Josh Bowles. It might be Evan Morgan. They're two of our, our top screenwriters. Um, helping you story editing for you as you go, taking you step by step. Uh, you'll also be working on a half hour for, for television or for series uh, and an hour for series, both a spec, so an episode of an existing series, which you need to help sell yourself, and an original. Um, on the one hour side, we have Janet McLean teaches for us uh, quite often. She uh, created The Border, one of Canada's uh, major one hour series uh, uh, on the CBC. Um, on the comedy side, on the half hour side, we have Alan Resnick, who um, was one of the original writers on This Hour Has 22 Minutes, one of our classic sketch shows. So you're going to have a full portfolio and you're going to have really high level industry people taking you through it step by step, uh, making sure you understand, you know, at every stage, here's how you lay out your story. Here's the beat sheet document. Here's how you think about expanding it into scenes. Here's your outliner treatment document and then when you get to the to the end to table to to the script you'll do table reads uh, sometimes with actors from the acting program uh, and there's there's the opportunity to shoot some of your work at the very end so um, it's an industry you know focused comprehensive program that really covers everything thank you so much adam i do have a follow-up question from sarah um so she's the one who's looking into our writing program so uh, i hope sarah did this did answer your question that you had earlier. So she does have a follow-up question on regarding the portfolio requirements. I think that's one question which most of the students have, like what kind of portfolio requirements we are looking for when they're getting admissions in the program. Right. So we don't expect you to be a screenwriter yet, obviously. We, we you, There's a, a, a few options currently. Um, that I think it might be in the process of being revised, but it'll be similar, just short format, uh, one to two, maximum three page short stories, journal entries, that sort of thing, just to to show your basic communication ability, um, you know, that you're ready to embrace the teaching that we're going to give to you. But it's not a, a particularly, you know, onerous standard. It's not uh, we're, we're throwing out half of the of the portfolios. If you show as far as I'm concerned, if you have a passion for writing and and you can write and even if you're you know, your grammar isn't perfect. There's a list of top screenwriters in Hollywood who never graduated high school. So, you know, English writing skills are not quite what you need for screenwriting. It's writing the way people talk. It's writing, you know, scene description, what's physically happening across the page, and then dialogue down the middle third. And that's it. Uh, so if you can show that sort of communication level, you'll be absolutely fine. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, I do have a follow-up question on portfolios coming up. So I think, uh, Juliana, it would be great if we can talk a little bit about other programs as well. So maybe film production and acting, like what kind of portfolio we are looking for. Obviously Absolutely. we can connect one-on-one -on -one as well, but yeah. Sure. Yeah. So for uh, the film production program, that will be a storyboard that students will have to do. It's a very simple, uh, it's just one page, just again, to illustrate how you create that story. And we'll share with you a sample of what we are looking to have you complete it. And then there is also a movie critique. So basically it will be a movie that you watch it, um, preferable in English. And then you will have just to write a critique about that movie. Maybe what you would have done differently, what was really good, what was not very satisfied in terms of that specific story that it was the movie about. So then when we have the acting for film, we will have the audition. There is also a headshot, uh, a picture of your face, so a headshot picture. Then we have um, the question, why would you like to become an actor and come to Toronto Film School? That is going to be in a writing piece. So it's about 500 words for you just to tell us. In the same uh, writing that you do, you have to put that in a video from one to two minutes, explaining to the directors, why would you like to come to become an actor at Toronto Film School? 
Then for the video game animation program, video game development and graphic design, there is a letter of intent. So basically telling us why would you like to come for that specific program and what would be your expectations on that program. So those are going to be the main portfolio for all the programs that we have. But again, connect with us. We will share with you all there. There's instructions, samples. When we can guide you through that, we can revise everything in a one-on-one -on -one session. So then you understand what the expectation is. And we are going to be here to help you on that as well. Thank you so much, Juliana. So um, moving on, I do see a lot of questions that came up regarding the support system that we had have for our international students, because I think all our students over here, they are international. And and I know it's a big decision when you move from one country to another and it's everything is new, people are new. So I think that's something that we really, really uh, take a very proud on like the kind of support system we have. So Juliana, Adam, um, from the faculty point of view, from uh, uh, career advisor point of view, so you can talk a little bit about the support that we have for international students. I can go first, Adam. Go ahead. Um, so in terms of support system that we have for international students, as you saw in my slide, we only request the students to pay $7,000 for your tuition deposit. Most of the institutions will ask you for one year tuition deposit. We are flexible on that. If you want to pay one year fee and then apply for SDS uh, visas, then it's a different story. We can guide you through that as well. And on that note, when you come to study with us, everything, the remaining fees that you have to pay, you can pay either by monthly or by term. You don't need to pay everything upfront. So you have access to a platform where you can set it up your payment plan. You can decide if you prefer to do installments every single month or if you prefer to do every term, which means three months ahead. So that's also something that we help our international students because we understand it is different. You are coming, it's a big step. And it's an investment in your career. If you really want to invest to become um, a creator that will be successful in the field, I want you to think of this as an investment for your life. As you invest in, let's say, in a house, in a car, this is your education. This is what is going to put you in your career, in your life, what you are going to do moving forward from today, how you see yourself in five years, in 10 years. It's not something for you to look in the first, second year. It's a long achievement, and that's an investment, okay? The students who are coming for October intake, we also have um, right now available $10,000 scholarship. So if you are already in Canada uh, on a valid study permit, or if you have a different status and you are not sure of what to do, connect with us. We are going to have... Um, a door opens event at Toronto Film School where we welcome all those students who are already in Toronto and would like to check everything that we have, talk to us in person, meet some of the faculty, uh, hear from them in person. We will have that event happening on September 11th. An invite will be sent out after um, this webinar today for those students who are in Canada. And then if you are here, take that advantage of the 10,000 scholarship available for October. If you are offshore, and you get your package, you get all your admission ready, then let's say by this week, you can still see what is going to be the visa processing time. If your visa comes in time for you to join us in October, you will also be eligible for the $10,000 Canadian dollars scholarship available for international students. So that's where the support system, financially speaking, is right now for international students. Mm -hmm. Adam, would you like to add anything on the academic side? Sure. Um, so... You know, we're on the academic side, we always have a great group of international students. We're not a, you know, we're not one of the schools that's that's mostly international. I think Toronto Film School has been traditionally 15 to 20% maximum international, but it's always been a great array from India, China, South America, Europe, Africa, around the world. And everybody really just bonds because they're artists. It's, it's amazing to see, you know, people come for, and then, you know, with the domestic students as well, everybody sort of, they get together that first couple of days, everybody's feeling each other up. And then the next thing, everybody's just going to movies uh, and they're getting part-time jobs together. We have a, you know, Gospel, who I mentioned, became a manager at a, uh, at a at a place where he started hiring other students because, you know, Gospel does everything really well. So became a manager at uh, at Medieval Times. And he says, I I'm going to start harder hiring our students because it's it's just such a great community. He's in a group that I taught a few years back with students from uh, Russia, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, 
and, and and he's he's from India. Um, there there's uh you know there's China, a Chinese student in that group. That it's just everybody wants to tell stories in the film side. Everyone wants to design on the design side. Everybody wants to make video games on the video game side. Um, when you find people who are like minded, uh, it's just generally wonderful. And when you can find that with from people who are coming from other places in the world, and you realize how that sort of affects your storytelling, that affects your designing, that affects how you do your art. Um, it's led to wonderful collaborations, films, students making film together from you know eight different countries or working on a video game together from from eight different countries. Um, it's just been a great you know benefit of our of our school. So in terms of supports, it's just each other and on the academic side, each other. And certainly the faculty will have a, an admissions advisor, which will lead to a program advisor. Uh, all of the events, you know, uh, there, there's we share some events with Yorkville University. So if you want to do some of the events with them, they have sports events as well that you can go uptown for. But most of the film students and the the Toronto film students stay stay downtown. Uh, there's a host of arts based events and and activities and tours and things you can do. Um, so you know, on the academic side, it's just really a terrific aspect of our programs. Thank you so much, Adam and Juliana. I think that was quite elaborative. I, I hope that uh, that answered a lot of questions our student had over here. So uh, like we were talking about events, Adam, and uh, the collaborations that we have, we have this big partnership with TIFF. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk a little bit about TIFF and how it is and how our students can benefit from that. Okay, so TIFF is is Toronto International Film Festival. It's considered right now the, probably the, the second best film festival in the world behind Cannes by most of the rating systems. Um, it's huge because it's part of how a lot of Hollywood studio films get released. They do they do a few festivals and TIFF is always one of them to get some attention and get some press. And then they have the big release after that. So we get big movies at TIFF every year. Um, a lot of Hollywood comes up to TIFF because it's it's convenient. We're only a four, four hour flight from Los Angeles. Um, so it's easy. It's accessible. Um, it's a huge event. It's so huge that the the, the TIFF you know, um, people created a, a permanent location in downtown Toronto. So while TIFF is happening, we certainly have a partnership with them. And as I said, we sponsor several events. We sponsored uh, three different events this this year. Uh, we have students who are we're, we're giving away industry passes. We're giving away free tickets. We're giving tickets to parties, to movies. Um, you know, if you want to volunteer, we have a pathway to do that. Um, there's workshops you can attend. So, we, you know, a huge amount of involvement with TIFF during the festival. But when the festival's not on, um, there are also workshops. There are screenings you can go to. We're a partner with them in their higher learning program, it's called. Uh, we actually have our own film festival uh, towards you know the end of the year, towards, towards, towards May usually. Uh, and we have that at the TIFF Bell Lightbox at the main TIFF screening um, location. So if you are in our film festival, you'll actually screen where the top films that come from Hollywood screen. Uh, that's always a fun uh, a fun event for students and it's a great night and uh, uh, we have an awards show afterwards so you know we're, we're heavily involved with TIFF um, you know for those of you who are coming uh, and thinking about that yes just talk to me and we, I can get you involved Thank that's exciting you. yeah over to you Juliana we do have some questions obviously we can connect with students one-on-one -on -one. we just have to be considerate of the time so over to you Juliana thank you so much Ankita thank you Chi Adam, I, I really want to thank you for spending this time with us, to talking to our students, to bring some light, especially what Toronto Film School is all about and how they can get the benefit when they come to study with us, when they invest their time through education to get the knowledge, understanding, skills necessary to take the first step in their career. So it's a great, great honor to have you here today. It was a great pleasure to hear everything that you shared with us. I'm sure the students are also feeling uh, really welcome with this. Um, I'll give you the last minutes for last words if you have some, and then we'll wrap up the session. Well, uh, all I'll say is if you're thinking about it, just do it. Um not to, to steal Nike's logo, but, uh, you know, there are real jobs, but all of the areas of the arts that we, that we have programs in video game, d graphic design, film, and including film production, acting, screenwriting, they're all multi-billion dollar industries in Canada, meaning that that's billions of dollars added to GDP. They're similarly large around the world. That means there are jobs. Uh, no one told me about it when I was a student, I was told I should be a lawyer or a doctor. 
Uh, and then, you know, I get into this world and I see there's a million possibilities of jobs and careers that are so much more satisfying for someone like me. So if you are someone like me and you have a passion for the arts, um, this is a great place to come to start things off and to get yourself ready for a career. Thank you, Adam. For all our audience, all the students who attended today, thank you so much. If you have any questions, send me a message. I will connect with you and then we can go over all your questions in a one-on-one -on -one session. Otherwise, I hope to see you here shortly, soon, either October, January, and we are here to support you. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. See you soon. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Take care. Come visit me. I'm at 460 Young. My office is in the corner. You'll, uh, you'll find it. I want to meet everybody. <laughs> Great. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks.